I'm Fox here and welcome to another Age of Wonders Planet 4 guide video where I will be going through the Oathbound and how I play the Oathbound. I want to say at the start, just first of all, this is not probably the most advanced ever Oathbound build I could have made um, and I'm only going to be talking about the Oathbound without any reference to any secret tech because it can get quite uh, in depth and this video would go way too long if I started to talk about all the secret tech combinations. Um, I will touch on why I use Celestian later on, but that's more of a playstyle choice. And yeah, without further ado, let's get right into it. I will be having timestamps throughout the video to make it a bit easier to go through if you want to go through certain sections. I'll be talking about the background, the society tech, and I'll be going into background, society tech, just the oathbound tech at the top. Then I'll go through the military tech, then I'll go through the units, then I'll go through the heroes, and then I'll go through a bit of the playstyle at the end, which puts it all together. So let's get into the background. So the oathbound are a feudal society led by the wise seers and their predictions of the future guiding the honorbound paladins and their powerful battle suits to maintain order. So their starting bonus is getting extra ter terrain revealed near starting colony. Um, so say your starting colony is... I probably could have had it... Where is my HQ? Say your starting colony is here. Instead of getting the normal, like, kind of a one hex radius, you get kind of a bit more. This, in terms of um, starting bonuses, it's not the greatest of starting bonus, but it's not the worst. It can be more beneficial in smaller maps, um, but it's 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 decent nonetheless. Are your long-term bonuses positive reputation modifiers last 50% longer? The positive reputation modifier is up here. So at the moment I'm um, adoring, so if you can read the modifiers plus 200, uh, I have four turns left. So say normally every race would get about five turns of bonuses, the Oathbound would get 50% longer, which would be about 15 turns. Uh, your battle suits use arc, well, weapon damage for melee attacks, the seers manipulate probability to control the battlefield, which pretty much means they have a lot of crowd control. Uh, the race has arc and entropy damage channels, and the racial ability is oathbound heroes can link to their colonies for economic bonuses. One quick thing I want to touch on is from my understanding, you can correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, oathbound is the only race that has a natural uh, entropy de uh, damage channel, I'm pretty sure. Um, there are other units that you can have with um, damage channel, uh, with entropy, specifically the I'm not really sure how to pronounce them. As as tech, as I meant to be at this 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 unit here, um, but the Earthbound is the only playable race that has it naturally. The other thing to point out with Entropy is that there is no known way to resist this damage type, and um, what that means is that you cannot get you can have like arc resistance or laser resistance or kinetic resistance, but in terms of Entropy, click on damage channel, damaging units, the uh formula for doing damage takes into account the armor shield resistance um entropy will always have a zero resistance so it still gets blocked by shield and armor the same as any other damage channel but it can't have its natural resist resistance which it's one kind of thing to, to keep in mind um with that out of the way that's the uh background we're gonna go straight into the society tech with the society technology they have the we have the tier one two three four five six etc your tier three and your tier seven are technologies based off your secret tech so for now i'm going to be temporarily ignoring them and we're just going to talk about um tier one five and uh nine so with tier one you have three um technologies you unlock you have duty of care which helps with your uh, influence and your uh reputation uh, I don't really use this doctrine ever. I kind of feel like there's better doctrines in the early gate in the early phases of the game. You have pre pre battle conditions, which everything in that battle or in that stack um, has one uh, proc of precognition. So precognition just pretty much dodges damage, um, blocks damage, I should, should say, uh, which is a lot more effective on single action attacks. If you have a repeating attack, it'll block the first attack, and then you'll take full damage on the next attacks. And then the third. Uh, thing you get out of the tier one is the throne so what throne does is it allows you to get access f to your um domain links from your uh heroes or your colony lords which the game calls them um without being in the territory so just to quickly explain one of the um what would you call it? it's the racial ability is that oathbound heroes can link to colonies for economic bonuses so there are different uh bonuses you can get based on what skill you learn you can either get a uh, bonus food, bonus energy, or bonus um, research, and then you can kind of level up those abilities as you get them. Uh, but what happens is that if you click on, where is it? If you click on this, 
you can see all the clon uh, colonies that you can link to and you'll see a photo of which lord or which hero i should say is linked to what colony and you can hover your mouse over and you'll see the bonuses that they get so as you can tell in the red writing so if your hero is in the colony's domain which means if you're within the territory of that colony um whichever sectors are linked to that colony you would get uh, i would get happiness bonus of 20 percent if you have the throne building uh, what that means is that your bonus is um, half and so you get happiness income of 10 percent instead and i yeah which is kind of straightforward it just means that you can get um extra bonuses while having your heroes move around which is kind of ideal uh, although in terms of priority i would say it's medium priority you don't want to build this building too quickly as there might be other things to build but it definitely can be helpful to have this building so personally i would never use duty of care it's not my play style i would always use pre-battle conditions and i would build this if i have the production spare um not at a very high priority ignore tier three um tier five i do not touch this uh tech ever i feel like for the cost there are much better things to get but to just go over it you get a warden's banner which lasts until the end of combat and you get bonus food and happiness there might be a place um with this uh tech but this bonus food and happiness is based on your uh, reputation level which I always find is pretty low at the start of the game unless you're doing something quite aggressive um, and then this tech over here I just don't feel like it scales very well uh, there are other ones but it, it can be useful in certain places uh, tier 7 you're gonna skip that tier 9 I would usually get to get the final doctrine or to get another doctrine um, it is pretty expensive considering you have to go through tier 7 to get the tier 9 so if you have a good tier 7 um, secret tech uh, technology then it's definitely can be worthwhile but it's not your highest priority. You get, you also get, um, besides an extra, besides an extra, extra doctrine, English, come on. Uh, colonies get eight happiness and battle suit units in friendly domain plus 10 health and plus three shield. This is very powerful, but it's just a defensive doctrine, which is why I don't really focus on it because I'm usually trying to be more aggressive, but it can have its place. And you also have your Seer Crusade, which is 30% extra damage and 12, and a strength chance to do um, entropic decay which is pretty good um, depending on how many seers you have so this can be useful if you have the research to get to it however there are also some pretty amazing things you can get with the research because it does cost what 850 it does cost like around 2000 research to get which is quite a lot um, so that's the society te uh, technology is finished now we're going to go over to the military tech so with the military tech uh, I'm going to be skipping mostly the units, so I'm, I won't be talking too much about the units because I'll touch on the units after I um, finish talking about the military tech and how I use the units and what mods they get, so I'll just kind of be going through this quickly. Also, this part of the video can go quite long, so I'm going to be trying to summarize and skip through certain parts. If you have any questions, just let me know. Uh, so I'm going to start with the uh, tier 1 oathbound, which is induction rights. This gives you uh, oath of loyalty and it gives you momentary insight. So firstly, oath of loyalty, you get plus 1 arm. Um, um, armor naturally and you also get plus one armor for each adjacent unit with an oath mod up to plus two um i'm not exactly sure because i never checked but with the oath mod it should mean with any mod within this oath bound uh tree i used to think it only meant with um with the other oath of loyalty mods or it might just mean any other oath because that's the oath of purity that's oath of devotion Okay, and there's Oath of Courage. So, so long as you have one of those other Oath mods, it does stack. I generally don't focus on getting it stacked because the downside is if you're stacked, you're um, susceptible to AoE. So, use that risk, um, you know, keep, keep that in mind. Uh, this gives you Providence, which is 100% chance to crit. Um, can be very useful in certain situations. So, yeah, it's a pretty good um, tech to get. I might prioritize it um, as like first, second, or third, but it's very useful. Uh, Entropic Foundation, so this is your a offensive um, entropy mod, it gives a strength chance to slow and reduce accuracy, uh, reducing accuracy early in, in the early game is very powerful because units without levels don't have very high accuracy, so it can be quite easy to get away with you know, dodging a lot of attacks, so reducing someone's accuracy then going into defense mode and you're, you can be quite safe. It's a quite decent mod, this one over here uh, damages 1 hex radius. And gives entropic decay it's okay if you want to do an aoe attack but it's not my highest priority um it's i kind of focus more on arc when i play but it's, it's still a good all-round mod and it's um all-round uh tech to unlock fairly cheap at only 50 because it's only tier one uh your arc your tier one arc mod is going to be an offensive mod which is static build up which gives you a strength chance to do static charge and that just debuffs your arc resistance by uh, one for two turns 
we also get 10% damage, which can be pretty powerful considering most of my units do arc damage only in the game. Um, so it can be it can be quite a nice mod to have um, as your one offensive mod for your arc units because you can't really use this and you don't have any access to an offensive mod here because it's only defense. And you also get your arc discharge dealing nine, which jumps. This can be more useful because this mod, uh, this operation is great if they're standing right next to each other in a one hex radius, but generally they're not. So I'd probably use this mod more just to get um, damage over three things. And it also has eye impact, which means you can stagger. So can be not can be quite nice to get um three staggers off for only 21 it's quite cheap uh the warden rank it's your tier two offensive unit i'm not going to talk about it too much i'll touch on that later on in the video when i talk about the units and which mods they have colonial guard is a very powerful um technology i would recommend getting it not exactly first but you definitely need it if you're getting to around turn 10 ish depending on how quickly you level your tier one units so what this uh tech does is this i never use this part of the tech which is a uh, gives you a paladin protector and your friendly colony it can be useful um the cost is it's not very expensive but it can be uh it can be vital energy that you're using so you know use it using the right place what you're really um getting this mod for or this tech i should say is to elevate to warden or elevate to protector excuse, excuse me i just had to clear my throat so your warden now what's up with the protect the protect no no no, no. the warden is this uh, unit up here so your warden is your tier two offensive unit and your protector is your tier two defensive unit. So just to explain, um, our target friendly army evolves a prime rank paladin aspirant. So your aspirant is your tier one unit. So I'm not gonna touch on it too much, but I just wanna give you a bit of a visual. So your tier one unit looks like this. Here's your aspirant. Your tier two defensive unit is your uh, protector. Here's your protector. And here is your offensive unit, which is the warden. So if you have if you don't have any tier one units at level five, having this technology doesn't really do anything. But once you get your tier one units at level five, having this ready to use can be quite powerful because you want to just kind of level those units really quickly. I really like this mod because it gives you, um, yeah, it's just, it's cool that you can actually make your tier one units into tier two and have them scale into the mid game. Uh, awesome mod, uh, tech, I should say, so I should stop calling it a mod. Uh, entropy inhibition, so you have your offensive uh, entropy mod. This gives you entropy, which is a debuff for damage. So this debuffs move speed and accuracy, and this debuffs damage. So it's a very nice combination. It gives you 10% extra damage. This gives you also 10% extra damage. It's a very nice combo with your um, entropy mods or your entropy units, which is normally your seers or your scouts, assuming you don't have any um, NPC units that have entropy. Uh, you have this deck over here. All friendly units gain plus six status resistance for two turns. This can be incredibly powerful depending on who you're versing, and it's also very cheap. It's only three special um, strategic operations, and it, yeah, just you know, keep that in mind. I some stabilization. Very nice mod to have. Uh, operation, sorry. Your arc retaliation. This thing can be deceptively useful. I didn't think it was that great. Like you get arc resistance, which is pretty um, helpful for all, if you're resting units that do arc damage, considering you have um, you take quite a lot of damage from arc. Uh, but what's more um, important is that when this unit is damaged within three hexes, the attacker receives six damage. Um, so it's important that part does not say the attacker has a strength chance to receive damage, which means that there's a p potential, there's a there's a percentage chance. It just means that once you get attacked, if you're within range, they are guaranteed to receive damage. So putting it on a tanky unit, you can you know get some nice damage, and if you have a few mo uh, units with this mod, and you're always going to be in melee range with certain units because you you like to get up and close. But then on top of that, you have a six strength chance to stun. Uh, for the remainder of the turn, which is uh, insanely helpful. Um, it doesn't seem like much, but it's, you know, it, even if it goes off like 25% of the time, 1 in 4 or 1 in 5%, like 20% of the time, um, it can be quite, uh, it can make the difference. So it's, it's you know, don't don't sleep on it. It's, it's very, very, I'd recommend it on pretty much everything that is in, that is going to get within 3 hex range. Uh, arc Manifold, so what does this do? Deal 10 Arc Damage, High Impact and Strength Chance to Electrify, so Electrify is the dot for Arc, so it just does damage over time. Um, arc Manifolds at the start of enemy turn for, for five turns. So pretty much, it's quite nice to have this. It's random, which is, it can be good. It's, it's a decent amount of damage, but I'd, I'd rather not, I'd rather focus my damage to kill someone's, but you know, it's it, it, it has a good place, assuming you have the spare um, operations and energy, you know, throw it in. Watcher, this is your tier two support unit. I'll touch on this unit later. Combat manuscripts. So we have battle pattern analyzer. This is your detection mod. Um, so it's not the most expensive, but it 
it's considering the fact that it's a tier two mod it can be fairly expensive to use um so you use it sparingly because it's it's not really something that you want to have a lot um it's i feel like there's better mods for your tier two i used to highly prioritize this but uh, it's kind of it's very situational plus two sensor range, sensor range can be pretty awesome whenever this unit gets hit within 3x range it gains quick quick strike which is pretty much a free attack um, it has the strength to give adversity, and adversity is 100% chance to fumble from memory. Adversity. Yeah, so it, it can fumble, which so it's it's quite nice. It's just that being a t if this was tier one, this would be an amazing mod. But because it's tier two, there's a lot of competition for tier two mods. Uh, Oath of purity, plus four status resistance and damage over time immunity, plus one um, shield. I generally might give this to my heroes or certain like elite units that I just don't want to get. Um, I don't want to deal with the damage, the uh, status status effects. Uh, the Oathbound are very limited in their way to remove status effects. So, what they have instead is the ability to have high status resistance. So, which would be this mod here and you know, this operation here and this mod over here. So keep that in mind. It's not exactly something I'd put on every unit, but on your key units that you don't want to get crowd control, throw it in. Uh, launch healing banner this can be very helpful if your 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 stack is taking a lot of damage and you want to just heal them passively you can like make battles last for a bit longer just to get that little bit of heal but this banner can die so keep that in mind um it's a situation right? it has its place we have tier four in the oathbound so we have battle suit attunement we have oath of devotion oath of devotion is amazing because it gives you last stand so what last stand does is you know say you're about to die at that turn you're going to stay at one health for the remainder of that turn um, and you cannot be killed i don't know if you can get rid of last stand i'm not sure if that's possible i feel like it's it might be possible but i've never versed it to try and get rid of it so if you can get rid of last stand let me know if not it's an amazing skill it gives you a lot of survivability however on the next turn you're pretty much sitting there at one health um also you won't get you'll be uh, disgraced which as it says here you won't be getting any experience but this mod can be very powerful on your tier one units if you just want to put one mod on your tier one units this can let them live an extra turn you have three or four tier one units all of a sudden that's three or four turns that an enemy has to put another attack into your unit so or it can be powerful on your elite units to make sure that they um they cannot be sniped at least they survive one more turn maybe you can save them maybe you can do something else but uh, it's a very useful mod situationally um not exactly something i put on everyone but you know it has its place we have battle suit defensive protocol i pretty much never use this um it's great for healing if you have the operations but it's yeah it's kind of there are other things i'd rather spend my operations on um and you also have a really powerful healing mod over here which is a lot cheaper in terms of um strategic operations so if you want to heal a lot just make the battle last a long time and just use that mod but this can be great if you really need that extra boost um straight away uh, decay chains so you have your tier 2 defensive mod um so this pretty much means anything that's close to this unit when it takes damage We'll just take the damage straight away and have a 12 strength chance to gain atrophy. I cannot remember what atrophy does. Ah, that reduces damage. So it pretty much has the same ability as your tier 2 mod over here. So it can be useful. Um, it can also be applied on any unit, not just a entropy damaging unit. So you can have um, your defensive mods that you know are going to get hit. So say you have a tanky unit that does arc damage. You can give it arc retaliation. If it gets hit, it's going to give 6 damage to that unit. With this mod, if it's adjacent to that unit, it's going to give another 8 damage. That's 14 damage just for standing next to a unit getting hit. You know, it's pretty nice. You can also apply some debuffs so that, you know, you have some incentive to make tanky units. So there's some already potential um, strategy or synergy combination right there. But Atropy Spread. Uh, so this unit has Atropy Spread for 3 turns. At the start of its turn, this unit and allied units in 2x radius have 8 strength chance against Atropy. So that just kind of spreads the debuff of damage. Um, can be useful i feel like there's other operations i'd rather use but yeah it's, it's an okay um operation uh arc impact module so this does um your stagger impact your stagger impact your, uh, your impact level goes up so it can allow you to stagger units that have um stagger resistance and also allows you to give you a st 12 strength chance to do electrify so electrify is dot is the dot which does i forget how much is it five damage per turn electrify i'm pretty sure it's five damage per turn yeah five damage per turn and reduces accuracy by 15 percent 
um, which is quite nice. The other, the main reason I do like it is that you can stagger, um, because I, I there's a lot of stagger you can do in your army, and Arc Impact is probably of the mods I've said so far, probably one of my high priority mods. I put it on pretty much anything that I want to do damage. Um, your tier 3 mods can be quite expensive, but this is the best tier 2 offensive mod that the OS Bound has access to, in my personal opinion. Um, amazing thing. Uh, yeah, so we'll move on. Uh, Ion Flux Charge. So this unit deals 50% more damage and gains fast movement for 2 turns. This can be useful if you want to put it on your champions or your heroes. Um, it's situational, I don't use it too much, but you know, it has, it has its place. Uh, champion. This would be my single most single most favorite. That's terrible English. This is my favorite um, unit in all of Age of Wonders. Um, just because of how it looks, how it plays. I will tell I will talk about how to use this unit later on in the game. Um, later on when I finish talking about uh, military tech. When I talk about units at the end and what <coughs> Yeah, my throat. And what uh, mods or upgrades I give to each unit. So amazing mod. Something that I also would always put my heroes into if I can. Um, misfortune manipulation. If this unit has a status, negative status effect, it dispels it at the start of the turn. And when it does, it gains Providence. So Providence is your 100% crit. It can only trigger once every three turns, and it prevents fumbling. Uh, tier 2. So this mod can be useful if you have if you're versing units that you know have a lot of negative morale. So if you have low morale, you can fumble a lot. Um, Providence is kind of useful. In terms of how much I use it, I almost never use it. Um, it's situational. can be great as a counter not exactly a good all-around mod in my personal opinion are you a diviner this is your tier 3 elite support unit um again i'll touch on this unit later on i but to give one summary i'd prefer the watcher over the diviner both of them are amazing they both have a place in the army but this is cheaper if i want to make elite units i'd rather have more champions um having one or two diviners can be awesome because they have an ability to bring back your tier 3 units so that's all I'm going to say for that for now. Let's go down to orchestra Orchestrated Manipulation. Uh, this is probably your best uh, strategic operation to inflict on um, armies. So this has a place, although it can be decently expensive at 600 research. Um, this is good to have if you're in some big 50-50 battle or if you really want to you know, uh, debuff one of the enemies are uh, really powerful stacks. So it, it's quite good if you can afford it, definitely get it. And we have Intervention. So all units gain resurgent and double experience. What resurgence does is it means if you die but win the battle, all your units that died come back to life. That is not resurgence. Okay, cool. Uh, when this unit dies in combat, it is revived at the end of the at the end of the combat if the owner is victorious and you gain fifty percent health. So if you have a big 50-50 battle, you have this unlocked, reduce the health of your enemy, and give yourself a hundred percent chance to revive if you win. And also double your experience. It can be a very powerful combination. Quite expensive, but very effective. Uh, probabilistic nature. So whenever this unit is damaged within a 4x radius, that unit is guaranteed to gain um, entropic decay and 6 damage. Also grants 2 shield. Can you have a strength chance to instantly kill a unit leaving no corpse? Um, the leaving no corpse is, is important for certain things I can revive. Um, even though I haven't unlocked this mod, this can be very powerful as a defensive um, mod. This is another one that if you're standing within range, they're going to gain a debuff and they guaranteed damage. Um, again, you have some mods up back here that are guaranteed debuffs. I guarantee damage if they are within a close enough range. So this range is 4 hex. This range is adjacent, so you have to be standing right next to them. This range is 3 hex. And so just from right here, you have 3 hex range, 1 hex range, 4 hex range. If you're standing next to that unit, they're going to take 6 damage. 8 plus 6 is 14, and 6, 6, 6 plus 14 is 20. So there's 20 damage just for standing next to a unit and getting hit. Um, again, this one kind of doesn't really fit because you have to be standing next to them. So having these two standing within 3x range, is, it's a nice little 12 damage. And a chance to debuffs. You know, pretty, 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 pretty awesome. This one, it, it is effective, but it's, it's too situational, so I didn't really use it that much. Uh, Neuroelectric. Disruptors, uh, stun mod, arc extension, and pulse lance. Uh, pulse, just yeah, it's called pulse lance, but yeah, pulse distribution lance. This is your. Excuse me. This is your bread and butter um, arc upgrades. 
Uh, so majority of my army is Arc, majority of the Oathbound army is Arc, not including the support units. So stun damage, very straightforward. If you stun, they can't do anything in the next turn unless they remove the stun. Um, H strength chance is quite nice for a single action, since there's a lot of single action attacks. And 30% extra damage. If it does not stun, it does static charge. So static charge, if you remember all the way back here, is the mod that reduces its arc resistance. So you're guaranteed to do some sort of status effect. So, you know, nice mod. It's tier 3, so of course it's expensive, but worth it if you have the cost. And back here, you have arc extension module. So this allows you to jump your attacks. It's not, it doesn't apply to melee or area of effect. So it pretty much only works on your wardens. It can be very powerful in debuffing an army because it allows you to hit three things at once. If you have the right mods, you can do potentially stun them, give them an extra um, impact level so you can stagger them, electrify, stun, static effect. And just, yeah, 30% extra damage, amazing mod. But it only really works on your wardens. So keep that in mind. If I can only choose out of one out of two mods, I'd always choose stun. The um, CC from getting stunned is amazing, especially because there's a lot of single action attacks on the units I would give this mod to, and that's H strength chance, which is quite high. And this just gives if this unit suffers damage and is staggered. I never use this mod. It, it's quite good. It's cheap. It's only three operations. Um, you can also stun that is 12 strength chance. Actually, why do why don't I use this mod? Okay, I should use it a lot more. I just realized how cheap it was. I assume that it wasn't that cheap because I didn't really properly read it. I was always just using stun, but you know, that's probably better than I, I I'm gonna use that more in the future. All right, you have your tier seven, regulated chaos theory. Uh, Oath of Courage, Oath of Courage. Uh, long story short, I never use this. I don't quite understand the point of it. Um, I get it, like you use all your action points to run, but I feel like as a tier three mod, there are other things I'd much rather. I can only really see this being used on your protectors or your very tanky units or certain NPC units that um, can't get anything else. It can be given to any units, so maybe that's why it's powerful, it's, but in terms of using your own, like your oathbound, your natural oathbound units, I'd probably never put this mod on them. Uh, time thread data scroll, precognition at the beginning of battle, uh, long story short, never use this. Um, if someone knows why this mod is useful, please let me know. It can be applied to any unit, maybe that's why it's useful, but I feel like there's much better tier 3 um, mods or upgrades you can give. Uh, butterfly effect. This one can be quite useful. It seems way too situational. Um, fatalism and butterfly effect for 3 turns. Uh, if this unit dies, it has the chance to give off these other effects. Um, butterfly effect spreads the effect from memory and fatalism is a instant kill chance. So fatalism... This unit will fail all resistance, arc in owner mind. It's not instant kill. It just means it's always going to take status effects. A butterfly effect is when this unit dies, it gives us 12 strength chance to gain fatalism. Allied, I don't know, okay. Allied units to it. Units allied to it in a 3x radius get a. Is that every unit? I thought that only bounced to 1. Okay, so butterfly effect is stronger than I thought. When I initially read it, I thought Butterfly Effect would only transfer to one unit if something dies. So say there's a unit in the middle, there's a unit in this hex, it dies, there's three units here. I thought only one of the three would get it, but apparently you can affect all three. It's more powerful than I thought. Okay, I need to start using Butterfly Effect more. Good to know. Uh, tier 8. What do we have? We have Exponential Decay. What do you do? Maxwell's Puzzle Box. So Maxwell's Puzzle Box can be given to only non-mindless units. It is an amazing mod. If you can afford it, um, I'd prefer the arc mods above this because I feel like they're more consistently useful. However, having a 30% damage buff is pretty awesome. But this status effect, reality break. So 12 strength chance, oh it's times two, to apply one random negative effect to any unit two times. Um, which is actually amazing because, oops, uh, reality break. Uh, so this unit effects receive random status effect that ignores the unit type restrictions. But because it's random, it can kind of it can be really hit or miss. Basically, it's amazing if you hit it, especially because you hit everything in one hex, but you also apply it twice over, because you see, two times. Um, I like it, but it, I would only normally put it on my support units. I wouldn't put it on the, any of the arc damage units, just purely because the access to the arc upgrades are more powerful. It's awesome on NPC units. It's awesome on non oathbound oh wait over here non oathbound units but personally i only have it on my um support units but you can put it on whoever you want you can test it out on other units obviously structural integrity diminisher 
uh, removes uh, armor and shield. Amazing mod. It's just straight offense. Do a lot of damage, take away the defense's arm. Pretty straightforward, most effective to hit units that have high armor and shield. Uh, otherwise, you know, you can use it if you want to switch it up. If there's a lot of status effects or like high status resistance, maybe you don't want to use Maxwell, you might want to use this, but I probably prefer Maxwell uh, Puzzle Box over the Structural Integrity. And Divide Half-Life, I pretty much never use this. Um, it's pretty powerful if you have already those um, debuffs on those units. Um, you can do up to 40 damage in a 3x radius, which is quite powerful. Uh, 100 energy and 8 uh, strategic operations, that's pretty much half when you're in the late game. I'd probably rather something else personally. Positron Technology. So you have your Positron Arc Storm, which is an amazing ability that has a, a cone, a 4x cone, 30% um, extra damage and does 20 damage like naturally. It can be great for debuffing units and you have one of my, I used to hate this mod, I thought it was useless, but I have a much greater respect for it. Uh, so your Positron Discharge, 25% harder to hit with range attacks, 6 arc resistance, and at the start of each turn, a random enemy within 2x radius gets hit with a discharge, taking 12 damage. So remember how there's a way to build tanky units that just do damage if they stand next to something? 12 damage, 8 damage, 6 damage within range, and 6 damage. So this is something that I would always put on, I, I know I wasn't going to be talking on champions, but on certain units, this is my champion go-to mod. I'd probably prioritize this over any other mod because it helps my champions stay alive. I'll touch on more about that when I talk about units, but amazing mod. So is this. Um, if you have the action point to do it, it's can this AoE effect can hit. Yeah, it's, it's they're both amazing. Um, I kind of put them on par with these. I'd put them on par with stun. They are both better than the arc extension. Arc extension just works better for your wardens because your wardens don't really get in a situation to to use either of these two mods very effectively. So, one, two, three great mods to put on any arc unit that you can afford, but do not put these two on the warden, and pretty much you probably benefit more by having this always on your wardens. So, as a reminder, wardens are these units over here, your tier two offensive mods, uh, units, sorry. Positron finished, let's go to Exemplars Vestib Vestibule, Bull? Don't know how to pronounce that. So, tier four, um, on previous guides, I like to talk about the tier 4 units because it feels like that's the, like the pinnacle of each army. I pretty much don't ever use this unit. If I ever use it, I've, already, I've, I've won the game by so much, it's not even like it's not even close. But uh, this unit is... Very, oh, yeah, I'm not talking about units yet. Oh, my apologies. Um, it's a fun unit to use, but I'll touch on that later on. Sorry about that. Now, Oracle's Guidance. So, Friendly Colony gains 20% production and research, and units get plus 2... Uh, levels when they're created. Um, this operation can only be used on one colony at once. Keep that in mind, it's quite expensive and it lasts for 10 turns. Um, if you can afford it, very powerful to give to certain colonies, your high production colonies or research, um, not really much else to say about that. Awesome mod if you can afford it. Flawless Divination. So you have Beacon of Hope, which heals 2x radius for 10 each turn, and you have Destiny's Manuscript. Um, enemy units with a 3x radius have a 12 strength chance for 2 and friendly units gain providence 10% damage or 2 turns uh, this is a great mod to put on your support units that are in the front line so namely your protectors uh, personally I never use them on too much I could use it more, it's quite effective 3x radius um, to just kind of debuff everyone in an area and buff all your units providence is stunned so it can be amazing if used properly but I generally just give the other mods because I'm a bit more single-minded, but definitely it has its place um, on certain units. Probably, probably the protector. I probably wouldn't put it on a tier one unit or any other unit that's tanky and tanky support. The seers are more like tanky defense, but this unit can be applied to any mod. This mod can be applied to any unit, I should say. A beacon of hope again. Put it on your support units. Very effective. If you want your support units to do damage. Give them Positron Shield, give them defensive mods that deal damage, or you can make your support units support your other units more by having these two mods here. Expedite Doom, uh, tier 1, tier 2, tier 3, with Fatalism have an 8 strength chance to be killed. Uh, there's ways that you can stack 
fatalism and adversity in AoE very, very effectively using certain NPCs, using certain um, seers or support units, or using certain mods such as Maxwell's Box. But it seems too cliche and too niche. I don't personally use it a lot, but it's very powerful if you can activate those um, debuffs and instantly kill those units. And that is the end of the military tech. So again, if you have any questions about any part of the military tech, just let me know. That's going to be it for the uh, technology part of this video. Let's move on to the next bit. Okay, next we're going to be talking about the units. So we're just going to start with the colonizer. Um, colonizer is pretty straightforward. You don't really use this for battle in any way, so it's kind of the same as every other colonizer. So we're going to kind of skip past that one and start with the scout. Uh, so the Oathbound Scout has a repeating entropy attack. So again, it can be used for entropy mods, the entropy upgrades. So, you know, certain mods you can give it is the tier one entropy mods. So that would be look for your tier one, sedating, and your, where's the other tier one unit? Nope. So over here, this will give you a little bit of damage and also give you some nice debuffs. And it's relatively cheap, 10 Cosmite. Um, I don't normally upgrade my scouts but if you do want to have a scout it's gonna be a nice cheap upgrade to give to your scouts you can also give precognition every turn which is you know the chance to remove damage or block damage for one attack it's also it's on a one turn cooldown so you put this unit within precognition range your precognition attack one unit debuff it repeat 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 precognition attack precognition attack keep it out of range um it'll be a very nice support unit for your army and again scouts used to scouting so you don't always need any mods for this but if you have some scouts around, throw a Maxwell's box if you can afford it, and you know, they're a nice fast unit. If you want to put your detection on your scouts, you know, it's up to you. Your Paladin Aspirant, so your tier 1 units, your bread and butter for a lot of your battles in their own game, and it can be nice um, fodder or cannon, like bullet sponges in the later games. So your tier 1 Aspirant, actually, I should go back to the scout. Uh, when you get to max rank, you, you get our range, which is plus on range. Go back to the Aspirant, your tier 1 unit. Uh, so this has a ranged attack over here, sorry, Vol Volt Blast, which is 5 range, so it's shotgun range, single action for 17 damage, so 17 is quite high in terms of base damage. Or you have your melee attack, which has high impact, so assuming they have no stagger resistance, this is going to stagger them, um, and bypasses or shield like every other melee attack. The defense mode gives you 25% evasion and plus 2 shield, so that's quite a lot, um, considering they're like, mainly going to be used in the front lines. Um, it can be quite good to... Instead of being offensive, just put a tier 1 unit that's in the front line, make it you know tempting to shoot. They might miss some attacks, if, especially if you're behind cover. Or if they do get hit by attacks, that are range attacks, the two shield is very helpful for survivability. The one other important thing to point out with the tier 1 units is that, what is this? They have a skill called First Strike. So as it says here, this unit's melee overwatch triggers before the target that triggers its act, unless this unit is flanked. Basically what this means, is that say this is a tier one i can actually make this a tier one unit move out of the way so say this unit here say this protector here it goes to attack this tier one unit here what swift strike means is that even though this unit has clicked to attack this overwatch will hit before the first attack comes out now normally the overwatch would hit after the first attack so normally this is my turn i attack this unit i do the damage and the overwatch comes next but because this overwatch hits first and the overwatch staggers what you can do if you're fortunate is you can actually just cancel the attack outright so say this opponent this unit here uses one action point to attack say it uses two action points to move and has one action point to attack when it goes to initiate that attack it gets staggered and it loses all the action points this is also true if you have multiple tier one units surrounding one unit so if i done this with this unit over here if this unit tries to move or attack, both of these units will have their overwatch triggered and they will attack that unit first before it can do any actions. This can only happen once though, so keep that in mind. It's also useful to know that sometimes being more offensive and having these units forward to overwatch and kind of debuff by removing action points from your enemy can be more effective than trying to have them sit back and just uh, vault blast. Uh, this melee attack also does not hit flying units, so keep that in mind. So that, that's it for your tier 1 unit. Um, in terms of mods, I generally give them the tier 1 mods. You can kind of talk about how much you want to give them. If you don't have any secret tech, um, I would always go with Arc Retaliation. It's also nice to give them one offensive mod, so Static Build Up. So you do 20 damage and 17. Once you give Static Build Up, you do 22 and 
18. So getting plus one damage on your range attack isn't that great, but getting plus two damage can be quite nice. Um, considering having this on just two units will give you an extra four damage per turn. Um, and also because they're doing melee overwatch in defense mode, there's an extra four damage, an extra two damage when they're defending. Um, also, I'd probably put another defensive mod if I could. So maybe Oathbound, Oath of Loyalty. Can be a nice mod, so it gives them extra shield. Can get them some benefits from standing next to other mods if they have shield. Truthfully though, because I always use Celestian, I would always try and give them the Celestian upgrades. Because with the Celestian upgrades, I'm, I wasn't meant to talk about um, Secret Tech, but this is... You get stagger resistance with this upgrade, which means that you're a lot more potent versus other um, melee units because you can't get staggered yourself. And having the other upgrade, it just gives you a bit more of extra, bit of extra health, ten health, and soul burn. So, two defensive upgrades and one offensive upgrade, whatever combination you want. Um, this mod here is just as useful. Um, but if I was to choose one, getting any sort of stagger resistance can be very helpful. It doesn't have to be oathbound. I mean Celestian, sorry, but that's just a good thing because it helps a lot more with your first strike. So cancel that. That's your Oathbound. You get to level 5, you get Morale, which means you're less likely to fumble. Also, this unit can transform, or if you have that technology upgraded, and go into this one over here, Colonial Guard, you can get a Warden, or you can get a Protector. Once that unit's at level 5, so keep that in mind. Very um, powerful unit that scales quite nicely. So these are my mods here. So Oathbound give it a Celestian mod, and there it is, the defensive mod, Earthbound mod, the Celestian mod, and the offensive mod. I also kind of mix it up. I gave this unit a Earth of Devotion because having it last one extra turn is really useful. Or I just kind of use it as Bullet Sponge and just kind of just be there, just don't die straight away, absorb damage and debuff. So the next unit we're going to look at is your Tier 2 Support Unit, which is your Watcher. Now. Where's my core? Of course it's not there. Okay, so we're going to actually look at this unit first. No, actually, no, no, no. We're going to keep it easy. When your tier 1 unit gets to level 5, you can transform into a warden or a protector. So let's just stick to that. Let's just stick to the protector. Your protector is your defensive tier 2 unit. So you get 6 shield naturally and no armor. So it's really great against some melee units. It has a melee attack that does damage to flying or air units. I mean, no, uh, flying or ground units. Embolden is your pretty much only natural healing and uh, your debuff, removing our uh, debuffs. So this heals in a 2x radius of 15, which is a pretty insane heal if you use every um, hex. You can heal two hexes. I'm not going to even do the math, but you can heal a lot. Heroism means you deal 10% more damage based on the difference of tier. So a tier 1 unit will do 10% more damage to a tier 2 unit. Or a tier 1 unit will do 20% more damage to a tier 3 unit. I don't want to use the heroism that much. I mainly use it for the heal and its ability to remove psionic effects. I only remove psionics. Keep that in mind. And when you get protector, you get 25% evasion and 2 shield. And you also give that 2 shield to adjacent allies. So that's everyone within a 1 hex radius. So your tier 1 unit, when it's in defensive mode, it has evasion and 2 shield to itself. Your protector, when it's in defense mode, has the evasion and plus two shields to everyone around it. I'm pretty sure this ability doesn't stack, so you can't get like 50% evasion and. Oh no, it can't give it, uh, evasion to everyone, it just, anyone else, it just gives a shield. My bad. Um, when you get this to level five, it gets from Shrug Off. So Shrug Off is a damage, is a status effect reduction. So Shrug Off over here. So you put your mouse down on Shrug Off. Shrug Off is plus three status resistance or resistance against uh, all status effects so over here status effect this is five but if you go to a non level five one which is this one over here you level five where's my stack that I had before this one over here this should only have two status effect right okay so in terms of mods um i would probably only give this the tier one mods where's my button gone i've I thought I was smart clicking on these stacks, but it's actually made my life harder. So early on, I would give them the tier 1 defensive mods. So anything defensive, similar to how I would build the tier 1 units. So what that means is if, if you have a tier 1 unit, get it to level 5. If you upgrade that unit to a warden, it will keep all of its mods. So 9 times out of 10, I'll just leave the mods that are already on it. So you'll see the same 
setup you'll see two defensive mods and one offensive mod the um, protector doesn't have as high of a um, base attack so giving a 10% damage mod only gives it one damage whereas giving it to the 20 damage tier 1 unit gives it two damage per hit but because this unit can hit multiple times there is some incentive to give it that offensive mod but it doesn't you're also probably just as effective to give it um, all defensive mods so remember how as I was saying earlier there's certain mods that you can get that you can um, use that kind of stack up your defense that if you're within a certain range like these mods here as long as I'm within what a certain range if I'm one hex range so if I'm in within attack range these units are going to take damage um, so this can be a nice setup it's very expensive obviously but I'd say just build them defensively give them any support mods do not it doesn't need any offense you can give it offense but you know it's up to you next since we talked about the protector which your tier one units can evolve to or elevate the next unit your tier one units can elevate to is your warden warden is your primary damage dealer your range damage dealer sorry i should i should say clarify so the warden similar to the tier one um the tier two protector it will get all the mods that your tier one unit has so again if your tier one unit elevates it keeps all the same mods it's the same unit it just kind of evolves so this unit will have all these mods ideally you want your warden to be full offense so if you can afford it give it give it a setup like this like the kind of late game setup will look something like stun arc and no it's stun arc impact and arc extension this will do a lot of damage um, it also gives you massive stagger a massive impact sorry which will let you you know stagger pretty much most units in the game a chance to stun electrify and you get to bounce it to um one other unit so you get to hit you know you can potentially debuff two units at once um, and also your warden's banner kind of has the same debuffs so even if it's not these three because they're relatively expensive just try and just max damage on this thing um, you're not really trying to survive because if they're hitting your wardens then they're in your back line and if they're choosing to hit your warden your front line which is like half your your tier one your tier two and your heroes who i make front line they're going to be disrupting them too much so personally i build the warden for offense uh, also to note i should say is that when your warden has um warden's banner it gives um upgrades so within a 5x range gives 20 percent uh crit chance and immunity to flanking which is also amazing because if you throw this at the enemy and you throw your melee units in there they can't get flanked or oh, so that particular unit can't get flanked uh, for one turn this can do it three times this uh warden also has health which means uh, the banner sorry it has health so when you summon it it might also um absorb damage from the enemy which can be also really helpful but i mainly use it to debuff enemies as a seven range which is higher than the vault great bow which is only five which is shotgun range um so yeah use it to debuff and to give that minor buff to your units what's more important i should say what's easily overlooked is the defensive mode so when you're in defense mode you get plus 200 blue skull which is plus 200 morale in a 2x range for two turns so morale affects your ability to hit targets uh, crit target crit target I should, eh, crit so 200 morale is 10 percent crit chance it's also good against units that kind of take away morale because you can kind of balance that out so you get 10 percent crit chance by going in defense mode for every unit with a 2x range and also warden's banner can give 20 percent hit, hit chance to one particular unit within 5x range so potentially have the ability to debuff 30 percent crit for one unit um just by having the banner and having them in defense mode which is very easy defense mode in the first turn banner on the second turn and just attack non-stop so after the tier 2 warden we're going to go back to the support units so if you have support units if you have not unlocked this technology here watcher ranks which is your tier 2 watcher wait what it says tier 2 here but if you tier 3 unit unlock oh tier 3 there but it's a tier 2 unit okay i was a bit confused so if you don't have this tech here to unlock the tier 2 watcher what you will have naturally is you have i don't know how to pronounce this i think it's ogur or or i i feel uneducated just ogur is that ogur i want to call it that which is what you have is the ogur i actually wait I'm, i forgot something so the warden at level five 
excuse me for, for forgetting that, it gives you critical hit, which is 10% crit from memory. Is it 10%? Yes, 10% hit crit. So let's go back to our Agor, which is the support unit that you have access to without any tech. So it's got, I'm going to call it your weak, your weak tier 2 or your basic tier 2 unit. Um, Entropic Shot, which is a repeating attack, so similar to the skill. But this has a H strength chance to do Entropic Decay. And you have Adamant, which gives last stand. So like the tech that you can unlock, you sit on one health. But different to the technology, if you survive, or when that effect expires, you heal for 20 um, health the next turn. So it'd be quite effective to have your units live. Fatalism, you know, inflicted on one unit, uh, it's 100% chance easier to hit. And it's guaranteed, or it's marking it to fail all its resistance checks. So it's pretty much going to take all the all the status effects you throw at it. It's going to take them all. One of the most important things, in my opinion, to talk about in terms of the Agor, they don't have any bonuses when it comes to going defense mode. So like the Warden and the Paladin, put them in defense mode, you can buff your units. What these units do is they buff your units by being in the same stack, by giving 25% bonus experience. These units are also floating. So sometimes I would build a seal, a support unit, so whether it's Ogor or any other support unit, the other tier 2 support unit, I would float it over so it can travel quite easily over terrain, and I would put it in one stack that I'm trying to power level. So if I have a bunch of tier, tier 1 units and I want to get to level 5 ASAP, I throw a hero in that stack, I get 4 tier 1 units and I throw one support unit, and I have this 25% bonus experience, um, help power level me as quickly as possible, get them to level 5, and uh, transform them into uh, tier 2 units. So quite effective cheap strategy in terms of mods similar to the um, scout I would give it just the tier 1 mods for entropy um, which is plenty personally if I can I'm not a big fan of the watcher I find it's very ineffective it's obviously better than a scout and it gives record keeper but if I can ever afford it I will always get the watcher over the um, agor so the watcher again I would always prefer this unit over the agor but that just depends on cost and whether or not I have that tech unlocked. Now let's go to the Watcher. So it's your tier 2 unit you unlock, your tier 2 support unit you unlock um, from the tech tree. So the Watcher. So the Watcher has Entropic Lash, which is a single action attack which bounces two targets, two axes, and a 12 strength chance to do Entropic Decay. For whatever reason, Entropic Decay has escaped me what it does. 3 damage per turn has a 1 resistance to. Okay, this effect can stack. Alright, so that's, that's a pretty good buff. But what's more useful is that it bounces. Because you can debuff a lot of units, which also means if you give your entropy mods, which do a lot of debuff. So, say you just have these two tier 1 mods, which is quite cheap. You're now having 12 strength to do entropic decay, atropy, and sedate. It's going to hit 3 units every time you attack which is far more useful in terms of trying to debuff an army than the Agor, which you can only hit one unit at once. It hits multiple times, so again, there's the disadvantage if you miss, but I prefer the Watcher for that reason. Gift of Providence, so this is your offensive support ability, which gives 100% chance to crit um, for one turn. This mod is very powerful for units that can attack twice in one turn, namely the Champion is one unit that can do that, or if you have any other mods or skills that allow you to attack twice in one turn, Giving that unit providence before it attacks is amazing because you can, you know, get twice as much out of that skill. Next up, let's go down to adversity. So adversity means that a unit will miss all its attacks. This can affect up to three units. So giving adversity just means you're pretty much guaranteed to fumble. Uh, fumble doesn't mean miss, sorry. So excuse me. Fumble means you can either do half damage or you're more likely to miss. Our defense mode does nothing, just like the other support unit, the other seer. Sorry, it has 25% bonus dam uh, bonus experience. I should have said in the first Agor is that you do not get bonus experience for the Seer, just everything else. Which to me is absolutely fine. If you want to throw some Seers into your hero stack, because you want to power level your heroes, that's also an amazing way to make uh, to benefit from Record Keeper. And this unit is flying. So unlike the floating units, oh no. Flying just means you're 10% harder to hit with weapons. Okay. I didn't realize you're flying. It's always nice to get that evasion. When you're at max level, you get evas evasive, which is is it 15% evasion? Yes, it's at 15%. So prime rank. Yeah, okay, good. So you can get up to just being flying, you're 10% harder to hit, and having at level 5, you're 15%, which is 25% evasion, which is always like, helpful just to keep them alive. They're only going to sit back, throw in abilities, and just buff and debuff your army. 
probably my favorite support unit for the Oathbound um, over the tier 3 unit, which I'm going to get to soon. Now that I've touched on all the tier 2 units, um, in terms of upgrades, I'd give them the tier 1 units for upgrades, or I could give them the tier 3, so Maxwell's box is amazing. I can give them this. Pretty much anything that debuffs um, is useful for the Earthbound, for the support units. Um, so I can just throw in Entropy because it has a 12, 12 strength chance. And now we're doing 12 strength to give Entropy, Atropy, and we're losing, um, reducing shield and heal. This is also helpful because I want to do a Mass Chaos, which is the Maxwell attack. Where is it? Which is the 9 range. That's going to have Entropic, Atropy, and it's going to have all these different um, strength chances, which is you know just really powerful just to debuff a lot of units at once. Extremely expensive, but this is your what it might look like near the end game to have your watcher. And next up, we're going to be touching on the tier 3 units, your elite units. We're going to be starting with, let's click this up here, we're going to be starting with the uh, Paladins. It's my favorite unit in the game. Your Paladins are flying units. They're amazing. They're elite, they're mechanical, they're large. Um, so let's start off with just the basic attack. So it has Vault Greatsword, which is a single action, high impact, um, so pretty much stagger anything that doesn't have stagger resistance, and it's melee attack, so it ignores shield. Pretty straightforward. Then you have Storm Discharge. So Storm Discharge is probably the bread and butter of the Paladin. Um, what this does is you have a 9 range, 9x range, and you pretty much dive into the back range, into the back, high impact, so as long as it has stagger resistance, you're going to stagger. And because it says full action, action continue, you have one action point afterwards. Now this is how you, this is one of the secrets to using a Paladin. Um, with your single action, normally what I used to do is use the Vault Greatsword, or I would use an ability which uses a single action, so one of your mods. What should be noted is that defense mode, this unit has its turn, it goes in defense mode, it gains tireless and resolute and becomes 25% harder to hit. Now I didn't really realize how powerful this was until you actually look at what tireless and resolute does. So this hero, oh no, it's a unit. This unit does not leave melee overwatch after it triggers, but melee overwatch cannot trigger twice in the same against the same target. So where's my example? So where's my stack that I had? So say you go back down here. Right? I don't have a paladin, a champion with the range, yes I do. So put this unit over here. And say for example. This is my Paladin, and these are all enemy units. If my Paladin goes into defense mode, so let's just move you two out of the way. If my Paladin goes into defense mode here, as soon as it's the enemy's turn, as soon as any of these three try to move, it's going to trigger my Overwatch. Actually, no, I'm sorry. It doesn't have fresh strike. It's going to trigger Overwatch normally, but it can hit this unit, this unit, and this unit. Um, right, which pretty much means that you can hit three times just for using one defense mode which is far more useful than just the Vault Greatsword by itself. Um, so kind of the incentive for the um, Paladin is to dive into the back line and be disruptive, but dive in and be defensive so you can just be disruptive again and try and, you know, cause stagger. But without these, without any mods, it's still a decently strong unit. The mods I would give it, however, Arc, because both of its attack do Arc damage, it now has massive impact. So even if units have stagger resistance, it's still going to stagger them. Um, unless it has stagger immunity, of course, it's not going to stagger through that. But if I had a single the other offensive mod, you can give stun. And normally I give one defensive mod, which is positron. Uh, positron just means you're guaranteed to do damage to anything around you. The arc resistance is helpful. Um, and the plus two shield, it just helps with your range attacks. Because generally, you don't get hit by melee attacks in flying range. This is just good to keep you alive. Um, the other thing you can do is you can swap stun. I oh know, sorry, you can swap arc impact because it's only tier two with positron arc storm. Because what this does now, all of a sudden, you're a lot more offensive. You have three options. So you have arc storm, which is on a two turn cooldown, and discharge, which is on a three turn cooldown. So the combination you get is you discharge into the enemy. You have one one extra action. If you don't have a good target, you go in defense mode. If you have nothing good to hit, if you do have your own range to hit a powerful arc storm, it's only going to use one action. Remember, when you finish storm discharge, you will have one action left, which is usually defense mode. 
it can be a single attack if there's you know one unit you really want to prioritize and you won't get much benefit from going into defense mode or you can use a single action which is what i normally do is i'll discharge in and i will face my um arc storm in a in a angle to hit as many units as i can so sometimes it's better to take a suboptimal discharge um to get into better range to hit an arc storm or you can discharge in don't don't have to use your arc storm go in defense mode Get the bonuses from that defense mode and then move to a position where you can then use your arc storm in a better way um so that's kind of the basic rundown of how you want to use paladins they are much more beneficial alive if necessary just go in defense mode every time you don't even need to attack just defense 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 so you get 25 percent evasion 25 percent evasion from discharge which is 50 percent evasion you're also going to be dealing damage by just being their units and having shield so if i only had two mods i would give it these two if i only had one mod if i only had one champion in that stack i would give it this to be defensive if i had two champions in the stack the single mod i would give them is i'd give them both stun because you'd be you'd have a lot more chance to stun aoe units or you can stun individually but yeah it's very effective either way those two mods are by far the most effective depending on how you play and how well you can keep them alive they're both i'm going to say equally as good as, good as each other other things you can do is you can give your heroes oath of purity which would just give you damage resistance, so you get plus 4 damage resistance. So having plus 8 just means this unit is very difficult to have status effects, which can be very powerful, um, just because you keep it from not getting stunned up or locked or CC locked. Um, so that's a very viable build as well. I generally would say at least one offensive mod, at least one defensive mod. The third mod can be whatever you want it to be. But a good offensive power would be Positron. Like Again, you could have um, Maxwell, but... I feel like Positron is a lot more effective than Maxwell. But it's up to you how you want to play that. So there's the champion, my favorite unit. The next tier 3 unit would be the... Oh, no, champion, sorry. Level 5, you get Morale. So 10% chance to crit. And let's go up to the Diviner. So to start level 5, you get Evasive, so 15% Evasion. And Tropic Storm does an AoE damage, so 1x radius, so pretty much like a bomb attack from any other artillery units from other... Um, <clears throat> other races I was going to call them factions uh, it has a st the high impact stagger it has entropic decay at 12 strength which lasts 3 turns I'll uh, go to foresight so foresight gives an AoE a 1 hex radius stack of precognition which is to you know block damage inevitability which gives an AoE stack like an AoE damage to do uh, fatalism which is you know guaranteed to hit that attack and you have not your time which is the ability to bring back a tier 1 tier 2 or tier 3 by 50 percent so you're either going to heal for 40 or you're going to bring a unit back to life this unit also has a record keeper like the other seer units um but in terms of buffs it's pretty much a stronger version of the agor with ranged attacks and more importantly the ability to bring a unit back to life um entropic storms aoe i would prefer the watcher because you don't always get your enemies lining up in aoe attack so it's not always that beneficial Whereas the Watcher would bounce to units that are within range. Um, the only bonus this has over the Watcher is not your time. But considering it's a late unit, it's expensive. I'd rather probably not get it, but it can be situational if you want. It also looks really cool. So Again, in terms of mods, it'd be the same as any other uh, Entropy mod, which is you can either use the Tier 1 mods, nice and cheap, or you can give it the more expensive mods, um, such as Maxwell's Box or any other Tier 2 or any other Tier 3 mods. Probably the Tier 3 mods, but... This is still quite effective. You know, it's a it's a much more support unit than the Watcher, which can be damage and support. So yeah, there's the Diviner. And the final unit, let's go into the Paladin Exemplar. So level 5, what do you get? Shrug off, which is um, status effect resistance. So the, uh, the Exemplar is a kind of unit that has the ability to switch modes. So what that means is that when you switch modes, you're either going to be doing bonus damage, this moon, uh, so glaive mode which is 25% bonus damage fast move onslaught and defensive evasion or you have a shield protector which is similar buff to the uh, the uh, paladin protector which gives you shield and evasion um, or you also have ordnance shield so switch a unit to give you switch bleh, grant target unit your shield giving it 4 shield and you switch to glaive mode 
Um, so what this means is that, see that student has um, six and five? Four of that shield is this shield right here. You can give another unit four shield, but this unit here will lose four shield. However, it kind of switches to like offensive mode, which gives it 25% bonus damage, and it only uses a single action. So what you're kind of better off doing is using your mode switch to switch to glaive mode, which is doing more damage. And then it doesn't actually show you, which is really annoying. But when you switch to glaive mode, you get an ability very similar to the paladin's ability, uh, storm, storm discharge. Um, it's annoying that it doesn't show you on this mode. Um, but yeah, you can swap out a shield mode, give your shield to someone else, which is probably better. So turn one, give your shield to a unit. Normally it would be your uh, champion. And then on turn two, you would get your ranged AoE attack, which is unfortunately not showing here, but you would dive into the back line and you would eventually get your shield back. So kind of it's a non-flying, tankier version of the champion. Um, it is very expensive. I'd probably prefer a champion to this unit because a champion is flying, which means it can move better. But this unit definitely has a place as like the pinnacle. In terms of one-on-one, -on -one, it can't really be matched. Its melee attack also has AoE damage. Um, so 50% damage to adjacent units. So that should be kept in mind. It has very low base damage. Um, it has pretty decent health. It has a lot of health if you can get to level 10, uh, level 5, sorry. So in terms of mods, it can be quite effective to do arc impact because um, that does not count as an AoE attack, I'm pretty sure. And now it has massive impact, so you're gonna always, you know, stagger things at the front. It's also a repeating attack that does give you quite a bit of damage because it's repeating, but you can be very successful using just defensive mods. So this just, you know, gives you, make you very tanky. You're not really gonna evade anything, but you can have a lot of stagger resistance. Um, your entropy resistance, you know, if you really wanna be defensive, you can throw on Again, throw a beacon of purity. Now you have status effect resistance 10. You're pretty much very rarely going to be hit by any status effects. Uh, maybe you want to have a bit more damage. You can give it stun. That can be effective too. It's a very, it, it kind of just depends. It's, just, it's a stronger champion, but sometimes the cost is not worth the um, benefit. So if you ever do get this unit, you're pretty much winning the game and you're putting the icing on, the, on top. So that's it for this unit. Um, I'm going to touch on the heroes and I'm going to be wrapping this video up. So in terms of the heroes, because depending on what race you are would depend on what skills. I'm not going to touch too much on the skills, um, what skills to get specifically. You know, if, you, if you're going to do a lot of archaeology, it's going to benefit you to do archaeology. However, if you're not, then it's probably not. I will say that in terms of my heroes, I do build them always assuming that they're going to be getting into a champion, which means that you need to be having piloting advance so as soon as you get to level six try and have piloting advance ready to be unlocked so save up your skill points make sure you have eight by level six get piloting advance i'd also recommend getting um vitality and you can also get decent buffs from getting ranged or close quarters like you benefit from both so um vitality is a good one and anything that can keep you alive so down here i have all around awareness so i can't get flanked i have attenuated so i get stagger um stagger resistance and you also have status effect resistance, so you, you know a lot of status effect resistance, you're immune to stagger. And these mods are all you know situational. Tireless is amazing, but you know, once if you have tireless, what that means is that you do not need to be in defense mode. So over here, if you're in defense mode, you get tireless and resolute. Once you unlock the skill tireless and resolute, you get to level 10. It's quite it's quite far. Um, you never use you only would be using defense mode to purely get your 25% evasion. Otherwise, you can throw an attack and still have tireless. So again, be careful to stack those two, two things up. Um, first strike is amazing because first strike uh, combos really well with tireless because you can first strike everything around you. So say if you hit first strike and you stun, all of a sudden you in defense mode can be this stun machine that um, just stuns everything before it has a turn. And stun has an eight strength chance, which is quite high. Uh, modular extension, quite obvious. You get another um, mod. <clears throat> don't know why I gave my main hero detection. I don't know, whatever. Um, so that one's pretty straightforward. Oracle's favor, precognition every time you kill. Helps you stay alive a little bit better. This one, not exactly necessary. Trailblazer is okay. But the other thing I would say if you're using an Oathbound hero, always get Entropic Infusion. It's very expensive. Oh, in terms of levels, you have to be level 12. But once you get it, you can do 4 damage. Well, repeating attacks and 8 damage for single actions. So 
but because everything is single action, it does eight damage because you have the bonuses. This unit will, this single action attack will do 49 arc damage and 11 uh, entropy, which is 60 damage, which is amazing. And then you have this, which is an AoE attack. That's what, 55 damage to anything in a 4-hex range, and this is 47 damage um, to anything in a 1-hex range. So just that, that little um, uh, upgrade right there, that little skill can add like 11 damage to everything. And if, you're in, if you get timeless, all of a sudden you're doing 60 damage to everything around you. Um, pretty devastating combination. The only thing you might need to be wary of is making you a bit more tanky. Like 8 armor and 1 shield. Very easy to kill if it gets sniped. So you can benefit from substituting this mod and just having a defensive mod. So Oath of... Where is it? Devotion? This will give you a last stand, which means you're pretty much immune to getting sniped. Um, it does take away your damage, which is fine. Normally how I play the champion and the heroes is I have one champion and one hero who has a champion in every stack. Because diving one champion in, you're very susceptible to getting flanked. But if you have two champions in, you can cover quite a lot of the army. Go in defense mode, you can try and debuff a lot of things by just depending on your ability to use massive impact. Which is why this mod can be so effective. Because it will give you massive impact to all your attacks. Um, which is what you want to do to either going to be staggering or stunning, you know, take away those action points and survive by being offensive. So in terms of just the heroes, that's how I would use them. In terms of your stacks, um, always try and never have more than one paladin. So over here, um, max amount, never have more than one paladin. If you want multiple protectors, uh, wardens, sorry, never have more than one paladin protector in any, any stack. You can have as many wardens as you want purely because you don't get as much benefit from stacking your protectors, but you do get a lot of benefit from stacking your wardens. If you want to have more than one protector in a stack, you can, but in terms of being efficient, you only need one. Try and put a seer in every stack, so you can get to level five quicker. If it's a tier one unit, get it to level five and upgrade. If it's not a tier one unit, just get it to level five and get that bonus. Get that extra crit, get that extra um, status effect resistance, um, always effective. Uh, again, the champions work best in pairs. You can have three, but that's potentially overkill. I'd rather have two pairs than one, like one stack of three champions and one stack of one, because the champions cover each other very, very well. If you don't have two champions and you only have one, sometimes that one champion can dive too far and it can get targeted. Also, if you have two champions, it's easy for the enemy to target one, so you can always have one defensive mod, which is where the devotion comes in. Having them both have last stand means neither of them can get sniped in one turn. Because you have quite a large ability to disrupt the enemy, throw them into the back line, disrupt them, make them immune to being sniped, and having the rest of your army come in and kill them before they die in the second turn. Um, anything else in terms of stacks? Not that I can think of on top of my head. Sometimes it's better to have your, here's another one, your tier one units. At level five, they can evolve. However, a tier 1 unit at level 5 cat has better base stats than a tier 2 unit at level 1. So sometimes you might not want to upgrade your units straight away if they're about to get into a massive battle, but obviously going into tier 2 will give you access to different abilities. So kind of play it by ear. Um, you can, you don't have to upgrade them straight away, but they're obviously, the sooner you upgrade them, the sooner you get experience to level them up. So keep that in mind when you're using your tier 1 units. Sometimes it's cheaper not to upgrade them because you might not have the upkeep, so also keep that in mind. Um, if you do upgrade 10 tier 1 units instead of costing th um, 4 upkeep, they're going to cost 8, so beware of your energy. Um, that also means that if you have the ability build only tier 1 units early, you don't really have to build tier 1, tier 2, if you can get away with upgrading them. But if you don't have the time to level up that tier 1 unit, build a tier 2 unit. And lastly, I'm going to touch on Celestian. Um, I wasn't planning on touching on Celestian, but I'm just going to say why I use Celestian. I only use the first two mods for Celestian. I kind of just unlocked this mod to play around, but what Celestian allows you to do, I did touch on it somewhat. Um, you're immune to negative morale effects and gain one le level of stack resistance, also gain shield. This is important because your Celest your Oathbound units don't have the ability to remove status effects very well. Um, they have the Protector, which is good, and they also have this mod here bonus um, status effect resistance and they also have this uh, this operation sorry and this mod but in terms of getting rid of status effects they don't have a lot of tools which is where lights embrace cleansing light can heal for 10 
and it uh, gives an extra heal for every enlightened unit, which is really easy to get enlightened because you just give them either tranquility or remorse. You can heal for a max of 40 and you can remove that status effect. So just taking away that status effect can be you know beneficial enough. It's only one uh, strategic operation. So this is generally what I would spend a lot of my sh strategic operations on is healing one unit that's getting focused or removing that status effect. And this unit is amazing. This mod, sorry, because you can have your I mean, to stagger works really well in your tier 1 units that go into melee fights because they're a lot more effective if they can't be staggered. And this, this mod over here, 10 health, which is always nice, and has 8 strength chance to become, uh, if the unit is attacked, get soul burn, also gains remorse, and that's just a stacking debuff for morale. Uh, losing morale which means they might, be, they might be more likely to fumble, which is always better because it keeps your units alive. So these are two very helpful mods for my Celestian. Um, secret tech which I can always use on pretty much whatever unit I want and they pair very nicely with the tier 1, tier 2, and tier 3 um, battle suit units not really would you ever use them on any of your support units um, that being said that's going to wrap up the Oathbound um, guide I haven't made a guide in a very long time I've been kind of cautious because I wasn't sure if I had the I don't know I've just been cautious of making this guide for whatever reason so apologies this took this long if there are any questions about this guide, please let me know in the comments. Um, I'll be more than happy to answer. I uh, hope this was very helpful. Um, and that's it from me, Foxy Alert. I'll see you around.